Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. You are officially on the second episode of the new series that I like to call 17 days of plant essential nutrients. Now, there was a commenter that said we should name this Plantmas because I said it was very similar to Vlogmas, where we are doing 17 days back to back of all 17 essential plant nutrients out there leading up to Christmas. So what a wonderful name. Plantmas has officially been born. We are on year one of Plantmas. And depending on the success of the series, we may do Plantmas every single year, obviously changing up the subject matter, but I digress. Like I said in the last or the first one, which was all about nitrogen, some are gonna be long, some are gonna be short. This one's gonna be shorter. All the information is still gonna be there. The ones that are shorter, quite honestly, is because there isn't a ton of research. Ella wants to join in plant mist. There isn't a ton of research when it comes to all 17 nutrients. We understand more, um, some more than others. And quite honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we end up adding some nutrients onto the 17 essentials. But anyways, let's look at chlorine today. Yes, chlorine. Before we start though, if you haven't grabbed your planners, be sure to do so. This one's for gardening, this one's for houseplants, both of them are different. There is the paperback options, obviously, on Amazon. And then there is the um, physical, like printable PDF versions as well. So today we are looking at one of the 17 essential nutrients, and that is chlorine. Yes, chlorine. So you guys watched my tap water versus reverse osmosis versus distilled spring water, etc., and so forth. In that video, I said that in all reality, tap water doesn't make that big of a difference. And if anything, just water with tap water because it's not that big of a deal. And I guess this kind of works into that video too because chlorine is considered one of the 17 essential nutrients for a plant. Now we discussed in the last video, primary, secondary, and micronutrient. This would fall into the micronutrient category but it still needs to be there in some capacity. So you're probably wondering, what the heck is chloride used for in a plant? Cleaning and sanitizing the inner piping? No, it's actually used to open and close the stomata. So they are located on the bottoms, or chlorine in general is located at the bottoms of the leaf on the underside, some on the top side, in the stomata area and so it actually regulates how respiration takes place and whether or not respiration takes place at all so if we have chlorine toxicity meaning high levels of chlorine we end up with very similar results or similar symptoms to if we had no chlorine or a lack of chlorine in our potting soil or our outdoor soil fun fact. And the symptoms of a chlorine deficiency or toxicity are very noticeable. It is when it kind of looks like a cut line in the leaf. There's literal sections, and I'll pop up some photos, margins that are just brown and crispy and gone. And this is because we aren't able to regulate the stomata, which is how the leaf breathes, how pressures are regulated, how photosynthesis takes place. And if there's a chlorine issue in our plant, we will very quickly notice these really abrupt, almost mosaic looking uh, damages to our leaves. And I wish I had an example of this here. I've seen it before in my plants, but um, I don't have any at the moment. So I'll have to insert some photos, but like I said, it's super duper noticeable. Like you cannot miss it. So we talked about forms of uptake or the form that the actual molecule needs to be in for uptake. And for chlorine, it needs to be in the form of chloride. So chloride is the bioavailable form of chlorine that is uptaken by said plants. It's actually not the atmospheric chlorine that's taken up, which I mean, you'd think technically, because that is the location that it's used or found in, that it's likely to be more of like a gas issue or uh, uptaken by the stomata, but it's not in this case, it's actually taken up by something called root inception. So this is way different than other mechanisms of uptake that we're going to talk about such as mass flow, for example, or diffusion. In this case, it is literally the root intercepting 
the chlorine molecule within said soil. So that means the root has to be in direct contact with that chlorine molecule. Once it finds the chlorine molecule, it's immediately brought into the plant and then allocated where it needs to go. Now, that means once the chlorine within your plant root system has been exhausted, the plant has two options. Either survive without chlorine, which isn't an option, despite the fact that they need minimal amounts of it, but the other option is to dig deeper or farther outwards or tap into that mycelial web in hopes of capturing some of that chlorine because it does need to be in direct contact. It literally needs to T-bone that shit in order to take it up. Oh, are you okay? The fucker came out of nowhere. So you're probably wondering, how is chlorine brought into the soil? What kind of soils have it? Which ones are deficient? All that fun stuff. And the reality is that coastal soils are very abundant in chlorine. Thank goodness for the ocean. However, in some cases it can be toxic levels of chlorine. So definitely something to watch out for. Soundier soils in the inner portion of the continent um, typically will be chlorine deficient because it hasn't come into contact with an ocean in recent times. But if you have like a clay soil, for example, like an old glacial lacustrian deposit, that is likely to have high levels of chlorine. And then of course, potting soil or peat-based soil will have very minor levels of chlorine in them. So you wanna look for a fertilizer that contains it or consider watering with tap water once again. Keep in mind your pH is always going to affect your chlorine uptake, whether you're taking in too much or too little. And this is a very common theme in the micronutrient world. There's a very tiny spectrum of pH in which we can actually get good uptake or not a like not an excessive amount of uptake and chlorine is one of these. So with the potting soil people, whether you're a houseplant person or a container gardener, definitely want to watch that pH. Oddly enough, onions, like for gardeners out there, onions and bulb type plants really like chlorine. I don't, it's just a thing. They, they thrive and survive well in high chlorine environments. So if you live by an ocean or a old ocean bed, maybe consider growing some onions. And then one of the other ways in which we can add chlorine to our soil system is through potash. So specifically potassium chloride, which is what potash is in this case. So if you're using any sort of fertilizer that's utilizing uh, potash as the mechanism to get the potassium, then you will end up with base levels of chlorine, nothing toxic, but definitely enough to help you. Now, keep in mind when you are fertilizing with anything for that matter, especially organic fertilizer or organic people out there, you wanna make sure you don't over apply the potassium in this case in order to get the chlorine levels you need, if that makes sense. So your limiting factor is always going to be the nutrient with the highest value in that fertilizer. So just something to keep in mind. So if you do live by an ocean area or you looked at the photos of what chlorine toxicity looks like and you're like, holy moly, I might actually have this issue. There is ways to fix it and it's done through gypsum. So if you incorporate gypsum at about 50 pounds per thousand square feet, just want to check that yes a thousand square feet in a loam soil for example this will help bind the chlorine into a less bioavailable form for the plant which in turn can reduce your chances of chlorine toxicity and then if you haven't yet gotten the watering how to water pdf that in there for house plants for house plants not for outdoor plants for house plants it will teach you how to properly leach soils to get rid of excess chlorine, which obviously in this case is another way to remove chlorine because it is water soluble. So one of the coolest facts I found out about chlorine in plants or just soil in general, actually, to be honest with you, is the fact that number one uh, contributor to toxic levels of chlorine is the ocean, but the second version is actually pollution. So I just wanna read some of the manufacturing processes that can release chlorine gas into the air as a byproduct and which ultimately can end up in our soils. So that is manufacturing an or incinerating of glass, plastic, paints, and stains. And then obviously refineries and chemical spills 
can cause this as well. Now, the chlorine gas, what will happen is, yes, it's in the atmosphere, but it will be sequestered into the actual soil itself. So the number one way to avoid your soil from capturing said chlorine gas, if you do live in, say, a larger city center or you live near a refinery of some sort, is to actually make sure that during the uh, output of chlorine gas is that you don't have a moist soil. So your soil is as dry as possible to reduce that potential capture because that uh, chloride, the ga chlorine gas ion, has a high affinity to water because H2O helps to balance it out and make it more stable, which we talked about a lot in our nitrogen video. So making sure your soil is on the drier side is ideal. And then once the kind of pollutant has been removed, you can make sure to water the soil thoroughly and really leach that out of the root system. So this is kind of where root interception mechanism comes to our benefit because if we can leach the chlorine way, way, way past the root kind of area and it can't T-bone a chlorine or a chloride molecule, we're made in the shade. So just keep in mind there. So that is all I have for you guys today on chlorine. I hope you guys enjoyed part two of plant mist. We have uh, six, no, 15 more to go. I clearly don't know math. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.